Meet my never lucky Iron Man, forks only, no spoons allowed here. After maxing my main and nearly maxing my Iron Man, I wanted to try something new. RuneScape with getting unlucky on every grind in the game. If I get any drop before the drop rate, I can't use or keep it. Valuable items will periodically be given out to viewers and subs. My goal is to complete the Inferno, and I'm not gonna stop there. Please subscribe to my only forks. I, I mean, forks only. What is up gamers, Fcast and Chill here. Remember last time how I mentioned that I had a way to train magic that would get me up into the high 70s really quickly for the Barrows portal? Well, this is part of it right here. So I'm actually doing the alchemy rune in the mage training arena. And oh, I need to turn off my alerts to where um, it doesn't notify me when I'm alking untradables. Let me do that real quick. Um, I alk. Okay, there we go. Uncheck the untradables and then we should be good. Okay, <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, this room is actually kind of ridiculous. So, you know, just sitting around alking stuff, if you have enough stuff to alk and constantly do it, you get about 78k mage XP an hour. The problem with that is, you know, nature runes are kind of expensive and you don't get any gold if you're alking stuff that doesn't alk for much. Um, and, you know, you need a sustainable way of training. So what I like to do here is actually come to the mage training arena and just hang out in the alchemy room. So, like I mentioned, you get 78k an hour if you're just doing alkables normally, like outside of this. But in this room, when you turn in the coins that you get from alking these things, you get bonus XP, and it's actually a little over 110k XP an hour, which is just insane. Uh, that'll make the grind to, you know, late 70s magic really easy, and then I can build that Barrows portal later and, you know, start grinding Barrows, but... Yeah, I'm just gonna hang out here for a while and get some magic levels because, yeah, this is pretty easy. And, you know, it, it is still using up my nature runes, but now that I have a really sustainable way to make money with the fletching and alking those bows, the, um, I'm not too worried about that. I mean, yeah, I still need to save up a lot of money to go take on Dagonoth Rex, and that is gonna be coming in just an episode or two. I just need to, um, you know, in the background, kind of work on saving up some money for all those runes and start getting the kill count. But don't worry, that'll, that grind for the Berserker Ring will be coming soon. On that note, I, I did want to ask you guys, what GP limit do you think I should get to before I actually do a giveaway? So, you know, I don't know if you guys want me to bother, you know, doing a giveaway and uh, when I only have, you know, maybe like a mil worth of stuff, like one or two mil GP. Should I wait until I hit a threshold, maybe like 5 or 10 mil, or should it be that after each big grind I do, for example, once I get to 128 kill count at Dagonoth Rex, you know, the drop rate of the Berserker Ring, then should I just give away whatever I've saved up? So please let me know in the comments. I'm leaning towards a 5 mil threshold, so when I cross the 5 mil mark, then I would pick a random comment from the video where I say I do, I'm doing the giveaway and then that's when you guys would get the stuff. But Again, let me know in the comments, we can talk about that later. So for this video, I wanted to show my new checklist that I had. So I actually got the graphic updated, I had a friend help me out who has um, a little bit of design experience. This looks a little better, I think, but again, let me know in the comments if you agree or don't think so. But yeah, so we got these two checked off. We got the magic level up to 66, and we got the Dragon Defender. So the next thing I'm going to work on today is the Lumbridge and Ardone Medium Diaries. And there's a few reasons for that. So, the um, but the main one is for Herb Lore. So Herb Lore sucks. I don't know if you guys have ever played an Iron Man account, but training Herb Lore is the most painful thing on an Iron Man, no comparison. Like you have to collect the herbs to do, you know, like collect seeds, go do your herb runs, collect the herbs and then go collect the secondaries for your potions and make them all. It just takes forever and is just really, really tedious. And I do want to eventually train my herb lore up pretty high. For one thing, basically a requirement for the Inferno is to have a stamina potion, and stamina potions require 77 herb lore to make. So that's going to be a pain. Another you know, requirement for Inferno is Saradomen Brews, 
and I think those are also 78 herb lore, so I'm definitely going to need at least in the high 70s. And that can take a long time if you don't have an efficient way of training herb lore. And so the great thing about the Ardone and the Lumbridge medium diaries is that you get teleports to the farm patches. So the Ardone diary will give you three teleports a day to the Ardone farm patch. And the Explorer's ring that you get from the Lumbridge one is similar to the Falador farm patch. And so these, this will just make my herb runs way faster. And so I wanted to do that before I really get into training herb lore. Uh, so that'll be the goal for today. Before I get into that though, I want to show you guys, I've been kind of camping out at Fossil Island for a while, uh, training my ranged. So remember I got the Dorgashun crossbow a while back and bought a bunch of bone bolts. So I've just been AFKing on crabs there. And this has two reasons. You know, one, it gets my ranged up, which is awesome. But another is after I got to the drop rate, which I'm well over, I've killed something like 4,000 crabs at this point, I'm able to pick up the fossils. And so these fossils that I'm getting from the crabs, I am actually able to go use at the museum. So let's go see that. You can see here, I got my range all the way up to 63. Uh, for some reason, some of my screenshots weren't saved, probably because I was having computer crashes or something, but whatever. So 63 range now, and now we're cleaning our fossils, going to the museum, and you can turn these fossils in to get some kudos as well as lamps that can be used on skills. So I'm just going to clean all these fossils and go into the basement and turn them in to get some lamps, because yeah, just going to throw all that on herb lore. So let's do that. All right, and now I've used up a ton of my fossils on getting these lamps, and so let's go ahead and use the lamps on herb lore and see how it goes. All right, and there's 40 herb lore, and 41, 42, 43 herb lore, and 44. Well, that's pretty good start. So, yeah, I, I'm still going to have a long ways to go, because again, like I said, I need to get 78 herb lore, and it's just going to get slower once I run out of these early lamps to get me through the fast levels. But it, it is pretty nice though. I, if I get it to somewhere in the mid 50s to start out, then I can use some of the higher level herbs and that will speed things along pretty nicely. So I'm gonna try to get up there just using lamps first. But anyway, so now let's move on to some of the requirements that we have for these diaries that we wanna do. So the biggest requirement that I don't have right now, well, there's two of them. So one is I need a mithril grapple. You have to grapple over the wall for the Ardon diary and for the Lumbridge, you have to grapple across the river. And the mithril grapple for an Iron Man requires you to have 59 smithing and 59 fletching to make. Now, last episode, I did a bunch of fletching and so I'm well over that 59 requirement, but I need to get 59 smithing. So let's go ahead and check out the Giant's Foundry and knock that out real quick. Shouldn't take too long. All right, and after a couple hours here, I am now at 59 smithing. That was not too bad at all. It's honestly kind of fun and engaging compared to just sitting at Blast Furnace. But um, okay, cool. So we got that out of the way. Now the other requirement I want to do is I need to get my crafting level up. So you need to complete the quest, The Hand in the Sand, for the Ardone Diary, and it requires 49 crafting. Um, the, this quest is actually amazing, and I kind of wish I had done it sooner, because once you complete it, you can talk to Bert from the quest, and it will automatically deliver 84 buckets of sand to your bank every day when you talk to him. And th that sand will be extremely useful for training crafting. You know, crafting early game is kind of a pain and one of the most efficient ways to do it, is just to buy up sand and soda ash from the charter merchants and running back and forth and just hopping worlds buying stuff is kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna complete this quest and then try every day to remember to go talk to Bert and claim my sand. That'll definitely help out. But first we need to get 49 crafting. So I'm gonna complete some other quests and train it a little bit to get it there um, without having to do the merchant hopping method too much. So yeah. So here I'm completing the Fremnik Trials, and that got me to 45 crafting. And then I went ahead and knocked out the Fremnik Isles as well while I was here just to get the Helm of uh, Nitsanot, which, you know, is going to be great for me. Essentially best in slot melee Helm until I get a Basilisk Jaw much later. But um, yeah, so that's good. 
And then now I just need to finish up 49 crafting. So you can see here, I'm just kind of blowing glass and um, you, you know, making it on a furnace. And there we go, there's 48. And now to get 49, I am going to do the Enlightened Journey quest, which is also a requirement for the Ardon Medium Diary. So there's Enlightened Journey and I got my 49 crafting. And now let's go do Hand in the Sand. All right, so Hand in the Sand has been completed. Now I can claim my uh, stuff from Bert every day. And you can see that got me to 50 crafting, which is super nice because 50 crafting is actually the requirement for an Amulet of Strength. And that is plus 10 strength in the next slot. It's extremely useful for doing more damage in melee. So yeah, I got that made now, and that's that's just awesome. Now, now that we got all these requirements done, the rest of the RD Medium Diary is super easy, so let's go wrap that up. And there we go, there's RD Medium complete. And let's use the lamp on Herblore and 46 Herblore. Pretty nice, not bad at all. Alright, so now we need to move on to the Lumbridge Diary. So this one doesn't really have any quest requirements or levels that I don't have, but there's a few item requirements. There's some rune crafting that I have to do. You have to craft water runes for the Lumby Easy Diary, and then lava runes for the uh, Medium Diary. So I'm going to go ahead and kill these wizards here. They have a 1 in 20 drop rate for each talisman, um, each wizard's respective types. There's like the water, earth, air, and fire wizards. So they're each 1 in 20. Um, so, you know, first I gotta kill them just to get to that 20 kill count, and you can see there's actually talismans on the ground that I can't pick up yet because I'm not at 20, but yeah, just gonna hang out here for probably about 20 or 30 minutes to get the kill count and get some talismans. And there's the water talisman. And there's the Earth Talisman, finally, after about half an hour. So, yeah, let's go actually craft these and uh, runes and, you know, work on that Lumbridge Diary. So, I just realized that for the Lava Runes, you also need a Fire Talisman to get into the Fire Altar. So, I'm gonna have to go back to the Wizards. But, that's okay. Alright, so... Again, after killing these wizards for a while, there is the fire talisman I needed, and now I have everything I need to go complete the Lumbridge Medium Diary. So let's go do that. Alright, and there we go. And there's 47 herb lore from the Lumbi Elite. Um, and yeah, awesome. Now I have those teleports, so I can go teleport to the herb patches, you know, three times a day and start doing that training. I think I'm still gonna hold off on that because I wanna get 65 farming for medium contracts and start stacking up Irrit seeds. Irrit's going to be probably the best way to train Herblore um, early on, just because they're, the seeds are really common and each Irrit herb you make into a super attack gives you 100 Herblore XP. But yeah, that'll be for a later time. I, I think for, um, for now I'm gonna end here and we'll have another episode coming soon. I, I have. Some more exciting stuff. Again, we're going to be doing the Dagonoth Rex grind very soon. But yeah, um, again, in the comments, let me know how you like the new graphic. And also let me know what you think I should do about the giveaways. Should I wait till a 5 mil threshold or even more? So yeah, um, cool. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I, again, I appreciate the support. And I'll come out with another episode in just a few days, probably. So yeah, all right, take care, everyone.